Hello, you beautiful nerds. So, I did the thing. I gotta say, I go to the movies a lot, and I haven't seen a theater this vibrant since, like, Avengers Endgame. People were dressed in pink and suspenders, people were taking pictures and shit. Like, Barbenheimer made going to the movies an event like it hasn't felt like in a long time. I was always gonna go see both of these movies, but I'm weird. Memento and Josie and the Pussycats are both of my top five favorite films, so... Duh. Josie and the Pussycats is the greatest movie of all time. It is better than Godfather, Star Wars, and Jaws combined because Josie and the Pussycats is amazing and it makes me feel good and it is the greatest movie of all time. All kidding aside, Greta Gerwig and Christopher Nolan are both directors that I love, so seeing that it was a thing to go see both of these very different movies on the same weekend, nay, the same day, warned my little movie-loving heart. And yes, I did see both of these movies opening night, and in this review I'll be talking about them in the order that I saw saw them. So grab a pipe and a funny looking hat cause first we're gonna talk about So unlike Christopher Nolan, I'm gonna make this quick. This movie was good. Nah, I got more to say. I'm just I'm just messing around. The music in this one was wonderful. Ludwig has certainly been in his bag as of late, and after this and Tenet, Nolan may have found his Hans Zimmer replacement. There are so many amazing actors in this movie, it's insane. Not everyone gets a moment or whatever. Like, Jack Wade is in this, but he's just... He's just in this. Emily Blunt always knocks it out of the park. She's one of my favorite actors of all time, and she does some very believable, sad, drunk acting. Drunk acting is hard. I don't know if y'all know this, but it's hard to act drunk. I don't watch trailers, so I didn't even know RDJ was gonna be in this, but holy shit was he awesome. Since the dude was Iron Man and then did this, you forget that the guy is phenomenal at dramatic acting. He's probably gonna get a best supporting nom for this if he doesn't take home the trophy, cause dude was so good. I think it's cute that Nolan is just like, you know what, I don't care what you guys think. I like Matt Damon. He was pretty good in this. It's weird that I feel like Interstellar started the whole Matt Damon cameo era and it's come full circle in another Nolan flick. But let's talk about my boy Oppie. Killian Murphy was terrific as the titular character. He's not Lydia Tarr or Daniel Plainview in the sense that his performance is super magnetic or eccentric, but Murphy is doing a lot of subtle stuff with his facial reactions that gives you an idea of what Oppie is thinking. Because it's not like this character has these four minute monologues about the horrors of weapons technology. The most introspective he gets is the last line of the movie. So Murphy and the music end up doing a lot of the heavy lifting to convey how he's feeling. I mean, unless he's hallucinating. Then it's, I mean, you can, you can probably, you can kind of guess what he's thinking. I also enjoyed that the movie wasn't a collection of scenes where it's like, this is how Oppie invented this, and then he came up with that, and look how great this guy is. You see him get inspired by others and build teams of people that make remarkable breakthroughs, but it was refreshing to see a biopic where it doesn't make it seem like the guy did everything by himself. The editing was a little strange at times, compared to movies like The Aviator where you feel like you see characters fall in love with each other. In this one, all the romantic stuff fell pretty flat. I don't even want to... <laughs> Let's not talk about the sex scenes, please. Oppie was an undeniably relevant film with tremendous acting and spectacular directing, and it's a phenomenal piece of filmmaking that I'll probably never watch again. I mean, it's just so long and sad. I'd rather watch any other Nolan movie, or, and not to compare it to The Aviator again, but yeah. That is a better three hour epic biopic. But it was still fucking great, and again, awards all around for everybody. It's gonna snatch up all the nominations next year, and it totally deserves it because it is an incredibly well piece of filmmaking. My ranking, I liked it. Okay, enough gushing about Oppie. It's time to hop in a pink drop top, kick it to Malibu, and talk about Bar <laughs> So I mentioned before how much I love Greta Gerwig. Her acting and directing is incredible, and though she hasn't done a ton of either, I've become a fast fan of her work, and considering how different this is from her previous films, I was very curious of how she was gonna tackle this. And this movie was pretty fun. It was so bonkers, and logically, like, logic is totally out the window in this movie. There are so many times where the characters are just like, don't even think about it. It's just, it's, it's Barbie doll movie magic. Just don't, don't think about it. It don't matter. 
None of this matters. Barbie traveling to the real world actually reminds me of the scene in Elf when he walks to New York from the North Pole. By the way, Will Ferrell is in this, and he has some pretty funny moments. He made me chuckle a lot. I was definitely skeptical when I heard that Barbie was going into the real world in this, because there have been so many fish out of water movies like Masters of the Universe or Sonic, where the movie takes a character out of the more interesting world that they're from and places them in a far less interesting cost effect shooting location in the real world. Luckily, they only spend a little bit of time in the real world and I actually like how Barbie and Ken react to it. Barbie is having this quiet, contemplative appreciation of the good and bad of the world. And at the same time, Ken discovers that men rule the world and he is stoked. Like that storyline was genuinely the most funny part of the movie. There was this whole other subplot with a mother and her daughter that was kind of lame. I'm not gonna lie. I see why they put it in here but the way it was executed really slowed the movie down i love america ferrera but in the little amount of time we spend in the real world this was the only part that dragged for me i did like the first interaction with the daughter because it kind of brings up why barbie is such a complex character to bring to the big screen in her words barbie is sexualized capitalism as far as her impact on society and how she has affected young girls and the way they see themselves i'd say the way people feel about barbie is mixed to say the least but i just liked how the script was able to touch on though briefly how complex a figure barbie is in popular culture popular culture sorry i've been drinking there's gonna there's gonna be some slurs there was a lot of fan service throughout and even though i'm not a fan of barbie stuff i still got all the jokes like i don't remember midge and alan or fucking skipper at as ridiculous as that toy was but it's still so funny and it's even more funny honestly when you don't know that it's a real thing and then they tell you it's a real thing and you're like my god what were you people thinking the ruth scenes were kind of i gotta be honest i was a little lost at first that was some shit that was really for the die hard card carrying members of the barbie fan club i don't know that fool to the huge barbie fanatics them talking to each other was probably the equivalent to captain america picking up milner so it didn't bother me or anything it just didn't have the same emotional resonance as i'm sure it did for the day ones let's talk about ryan gosling for just a second usually himbo characters annoy the ever living out of me especially when the performance is so big but i gotta say i enjoy Ryan Gosling's performance in this one. Him and Barbie's relationship is so funny because they don't actually like each other that much. He's just kind of compelled to like her because he was created that way, but when they're not gazing into each other's doll eyes or whatever, they clearly can't stand one another. And Gosling's character kind of grew on me as the film went on. At first I was like, uh, Simu Liu is kind of out acting Ryan Gosling right now. But when it became clear that they were playing two very different kins, I was like, Okay, nah, you're all right. By the way, Simu Liu is in this and he's great, but you know what Marvel actor is in this and isn't great? Fucking this guy. He sucked. Every scene he was in, I just felt bad for him because he clearly didn't know what to do. He must be hilarious in real life because I can't think of any reason why anyone would cast him in this role instead of like Damon Wayans Jr. or some such shit. I always like Kate McKinnon on SNL, but I've never seen a screen performance of hers that impressed me. The idea of a weird Barbie was way funnier than her depiction of it. She made me giggle a couple of times, but I attribute that more to the script than her performance. All the other background actors were pretty great though. Issa Rae, Harry Neff, Emma Mackey, Nkute Gatwa, I'm, I know I pronounced that wrong. My girl Ritu Arya is up in this bitch. Just so many funny little moments from all of them. Margot Robbie is also great, but I wasn't blown away by her performance in this role. Maybe I've gotten too used to Margot Robbie just absolutely crushing it that I can't notice when she does something amazing anymore. She definitely nailed the more emotional scenes and helped make those moments more believable. But for it to be a Barbie movie, movie, Barbie didn't really blow me away. I mean, she's still great. I don't think that she was miscast or anything. I mean, she's great casting for her look alone. There's a scene after Barbie becomes self-aware or whatever, and she's like, I'm not perfect like I used to be. And then the narrator is like, note to the casting directors, Margot Robbie is the worst actor to get this point across. That, uh, <laughs> 
that that uh, that really got me but yeah not taking anything away from her or just her performance wasn't the most interesting thing of the film now this wasn't a masterpiece by any means i was walking in hoping that it would hit that perfect blend of heart and silliness that movies like mean girls or the aforementioned josie and the pussycats but some of the comedy just didn't land for me and again the mother-daughter story felt a little put on but i mean let's be real this is a movie about barbie what are you what are you looking for from a barbie movie i mean this isn't taking know many oscars or anything except maybe for production design and cinematography because that is genuinely impressive the dance numbers were stupid in the funniest way most of the actors fucking killed it the dialogue was ridiculous i won't let you do just one appendectomy but i'm a man but not a doctor can i talk to a doctor you are talking to a doctor like i also want to be good at beach and on the whole the absolute insanity that is the first live action barbie movie was incredibly enjoyable my ranking i liked it this was a weird this was a weird double feature you can be all cynical if you want to and be like this was a calculated marketing thing because of the strike or because of the sordid relationship between warners and christopher nolan or blah 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 but i was personally happy to see people stoked to go to the movies again if i had to compare how i felt about the two i guess i would say that oppenheimer is clearly the better film but barbie will be the one i end up reading visiting the most it's just way more fun and has so much rewatchability with this the silly gags like i imagine i'm gonna pick up a lot on rewatches of barbie i had a spectacular time at the movies and i feel like a lot of people did as well all that being said though D&D is still my favorite movie of the year. Okay, that's it for this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As I mentioned before, I'll be doing a review of Foundation once season two is over. But in the meantime, in between time, you can check me out on the Nine Nerd Yards channel where me and Nine will be chatting about each episode in season two. But until next time, stay safe, my little hot pink isotopes, and may the force be with you.